interruption. So we said we had a question as to whether the prohibition is because the of, of the, the rabbis enacted a prohibition against doing business with the ancient pagans. It doesn't apply today. Bef- three days before the hosp- f- before their festivals, is it because they're going to go and thank their pagan gods, or is it because? Um, in Leviticus, it says in 1914, don't put a stumbling block before the blind. That you give, you're selling him an animal, he's going to offer it for a sacrifice. So, my nafkamina, what difference does it make? The east, lay behem la day, imart mishamar vacha, hakamar vachle. So, if he already has an animal, so then it's the profit that he has. And uh, so he's going to thank his pagan deity for his for 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 this uh, profit that he made. But if you're going to say, don't put a stumbling block before the blind, east later the day he already has an animal. So what are you worried about? He's going to sacrifice whether or not you give him the animal. You sell an animal. Uh, but wait a second, even if he has an animal, yeah. aren't you still putting a stumbling block behind yeah. before the blind? Rabbi Nosson says, Where do we derive, the script now we're on Ahmed Bez, Vav Ahmed Bez, where do we derive that you shouldn't give a cup of wine to a Nazarite or a limb taken from a living animal to a Noahide to a, to a, to a non-Jew because scripture tells us in Leviticus don't put a stumbling block before the blind <coughs> but if you don't hand these people these items are forbidden to them can't they take it on their own? <coughs> Excuse me. Kavar shouldn't lift any either. You only pro you only violate the prohibition if you hand it to them. If they could take it on their own. So the same thing here. This even though he has an animal, if you're giving if you're selling him the animal, it's also an issue. <laughs> Excuse me. What are you talking about? The Kaba Srey Every Nahara. What about the if the person and the forbidden item are on two sides of the river and you're gonna bring him you know to give them the opportunity? Well, the Bryce actually says you shouldn't extend this term. Lahoshit means to hand it over, but doesn't but doesn't mean to give. I mean, you're stretching out. Shmamina. So this is like the case where they're standing on two sides of the river, where he wouldn't have the opportunity, and so it doesn't have a connection. So they asked. What is the law if you did if you violated this rabbinical edict and you'd made business with the with the pagan? So Biechanan says that the business tran- the proceeds from the transaction are pro- are forbidden. Reish said, no, it's just you're not allowed to do it. But if you did it already, you're allowed to derive benefit from the. Business transaction. So Rabbi Yochanan challenged his brother-in-law Rish Lakish. He said he found a bride. My love with Neidehen. So Bryce says, if you did business on the holiday, then uh, it would be. Um, the proceeds would be prohibited to use. 
So what about before the holiday? Loy, a day in Tavka. Sreish Lakish says, no, it's only before the holiday that there's the pro... That it's only on the holiday that the proceeds would be prohibited, but not before. Ikad Amre, so some discuss like this, Eisve, Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish, Rabbi Yochanan. Rish Lakish challenged Rabbi Yochanan, a day in Shalai, the Kachav, and Nasav, Nasav, and Asar, a day in Ain, a day in Midloi. That it was actually worded differently, the same conclusion, but it's but the, by virtue of the fact that the Brisa lists the prohibition before uh, on the holiday that any the proceeds would be prohibited, that shows that if that uh, business transactions are conducted before the holiday, even though we're not allowed to, we were not allowed to do so, these, we weren't allowed to engage in the business. Once it was done, it would be permitted to. Have benefit from the transaction. Tana uh, idivide adain karile. So either way, we're saying that it's the festival. But you could say Rabbi Yechonon says that even the days before are also prohibited. That uh, that there's really no difference and there's no proof from this brisa. Tanya covers seder reish There's another brisa that seems to agree with reish lakish that it would be permitted. So, the Abraisa says that when the rabbi said it's prohibited to do business transactions, it's only with something that's going to last. But if it's but it's not going to last until the holiday. They're going to eat it right away. And there's no prohibition. And the price itself says, and even with something that will last, if you did the business, you're allowed to derive benefit from it. So we see the price openly agrees with Reish Lakish. Tani Ravzvid B'devei Rabbi Yashaya Ravzvid taught the following price from the students of Rabbi Yashaya. So Davar Shein Miskayim Moichin Lahem, about Ein Moichin Mehem. Wait, why are you turning off the video? So um, Tana Devei Reb Zvid Devei Reb Shaya Davar Shein Miskayim Moichin Lahem, about Ein Moichin Mehem. Why you listen to books? So, so Reb Zvid taught from Devei Reb Shaya. That you can sell them something that will not endure, but you can't buy something from them. So therefore, when you sell it to them, then they're going to eat it right away. But if you buy it from them, they're going to be thanking for the for the uh, they're going to thank their idol for the profit that they made. Homina the shader le dinara kesarna l'rebbe Yehuda nesia b'yem edai have a yosef reishlakish kame amar. Hechi Evid Eshklei Azalamaida Le Eshklei Havile Eva Amale Reish Lakish Toilus Reiko Isilabor Bifanov Amar Kolshikin de Havile Eva Klacher Yad Hukt Kamina. So there was a, 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 a min or, or a heretic or a pagan, whatever, who gave a freshly minted cesarean coin that had been issued that very day to Rabbi Yehuda Nasiya, who was the grandson of, of Rabbeinu Kaddish, of Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, on the day of that pagan's festival. On this, the day of that pagan's festival. And Reish Lakish was there, and Rabbi Yehuda Nasiya asked Reish Lakish, what should I do? Should I take it? Then he's going to go Thank his, no. his um, One. his God that he, um, that he was able to give a gift to such an important person, um, a distinguished person. <clears throat> if I don't take it, he's going to be mad at me, and it could cause anti-Semitism. So Reish Lakish said, "Go." And th throw it in into a well in front of him. 
So then Yudin Nesiyah said to Reish Lakish, then he's going to really be mad. And it's going to make it at the seventh sim. So Reish Lakish said, no, no, make it look like an accident. And so therefore, uh, he's not going to feel bad. He's not going to be mad at you because it was an accident. And he's not going to thank his pagan god either. Um, again, this is in ancient times. These laws don't apply today. Um, and it would seem that really for an average person, he would be allowed to accept the gift. It's just because Ruda Nasiya was such a distinguished person. I don't think we have such distinguished people today. All right, back to our Mishnah. La Shilam Mehen. The Mishnah continues and says that you cannot lend or borrow items from them. If you lend to them, then they have a benefit. But if you borrow from them, what benefit do they have? Borrowing is prohibited because if you borrow, you might also lend. So Rava says, no, they might still thank, be happy and thank his God, particularly because, oh look, uh, I'm so rich that I can lend even to this this Jew, and that this Jew is poor, you know, and, and, and that could be part of the issue. That he'll feel, look at me, I'm a big shot, because I'm, I'm lending to a Jew. Man, the same thing to lend and borrow money. Now we can understand why you can't lend because they have a benefit of a little voice. May hand my. Why can't you borrow? I'm a gazer little voice man not to The buyer said, you can't borrow because also it's it's connected to lending. So if you, if you borrow, you might also lend. Rav Amar Kula Mishum Dazel Moidahu. Rav says, no, he's going to thank his idol if um, if he's lending because he's, it feels like a big shot. L'farin with Loyer Mehen, to repay a debt or to collect payment. Shlom L'farin Mishum De Kamar Vachlehu. Again, if you pay them back the debt, so they have a benefit. Av L'farin Mehen Mir to Mayit Lehu. Meaning wait till after the holiday to pay them back. But what about collecting a payment? He, it's taking away his money. So buy a gazer and fry my hand out to the foreign. And so, Abaya said that he can't uh, collect a payment because it's connected to repaying. Rava Amar Kula Mishum doesn't who, but Rava says he's no. He's going to go and be thankful that he's free of debt. It's Rikhe. So we have to teach all of these about borrowing and lending, repaying and 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 uh, and collecting and 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 borrowing and lending both uh, money and, and objects. Why? If it would just said you can and and to do business, because if the Mishnah only said to do business, de kamar it's because he's going to have a benefit, a profit. That's why he's going to thank his idol. But when you're borrowing, you're, t- you're holding back. Shaper dummy. So what, that should be okay. If you just said to borrow articles but not money, that's something that's very meaningful. That a Jew needs to borrow an item from him that shows, oh look, that I'm a big shot because I'm I'm lending to this Jew. But borrowing money, that's just a, a pain in the neck. Because he's going to think he's never going to get it back anyway. So what difference does it make? So again, he's he, he, we have to include this in the teaching. That all of these things are prohibited. These are the reasons why they're mentioned. If you're going to teach that you can't borrow from them, the pagan might think, I'm not worried I'm going to have a loss because I'm going to force him to pay it back. I'll break his legs if he doesn't. So then he's going to be thankful to his idol that the Jew is in need of him and he feels like a big shot. 
but to collect a debt, the su lehadri zuze. If he's collecting the debt, he's never going to get the money back. Hey, sorry, Yisle. That's only a pain in the neck. So he's not going to be thankful for that. So tzricha. So that's why it had to be taught. Because no, you might think that's the case, but it's not the case. It's also he's still going to be thankful because he's free of debt. All right, back to our Mishnah. Rabbi Yehuda, I'm in front of him. Rabbi Yehuda says you can collect payment because. It, because he's not going to be thankful for that. And he's not going to thank his idol. So Rabbi Yehuda doesn't ag- accept the idea that even though he's upset now, he's going to be happy later that he, that he was free of debt. Well, we have the same Rabbi Yehuda taught in the Brisa that in Cholamoyed, a woman can't put a de- Dilapidatory uh, lime on her skin, because it's it's painful and it's disfiguring. Murder Yehuda besit she yecholo lekaple b'moyed, shetu faalto b'moyed, afal pishem mitzira achshav smech hilachas man. But the same Rabbi Yehuda says that if she can put it on during cholamoyed and remove it during cholamoyed, she's allowed to do that because even though it causes her pain now, she's happy when it gets taken off. Even though it's uncomfortable at the time, it's whatever. It's it's a, uh, a cosmetic purpose. So Amr, so so we see that Rabbi Yehuda does accept the idea that there could be a temporary pain that's going to have a, a a joy attached to it subsequently. And Rabbi Nachman Bar Yitzchak, Rabbi Nachman Bar Yitzchak says, Nach lehilchus moyed. Who made her achshav simchalachus man? So Reb Nachman Yitzchak said everything with cholamoyed that even if it's uncomfortable now, if it makes you happy later, Reb Yehuda allows on on cholamoyed. That's the whole idea. You know, for example, uh, you know you're cooking, you're baking cholamoyed, you're shechting, doing all these things. Why? Even though it's it's a pain in the neck, right? We don't uh, we don't cook on Shabbos. We don't shecht on Shabbos, but Yantiv and Cholamoyed we allow it because you're going to enjoy. It, it's going to help you enjoy the Yantiv, even though it, it's it's a pain in the neck at the time. It brings you joy. Um. So, but this has nothing to do. This law of Cholamoyed has nothing to do with this law of Lufnei Dehem. Ravina Omar, the Cholamoyed, by the way, for those who don't know, I'm sure most people who are watching are knowing, but it's worthwhile to uh, to explain that Passover and Tabernacles, the first two days and last two days, or biblically speaking, the first and last day of those festivals, and that's how it is in the Holy Land, are prohibited in most types of work that are prohibited on the Sabbath, with a few exceptions that are permitted. And then there's the intermediate days, the you know, the in-between days, except for the Sabbath, which are kind of a quasi-festival. I mean, it includes the Sabbath as well, but the Sabbath has regular Sabbath prohibitions, which, uh, you know, we wear festival clothing, we have festive prayers, but also weekday prayers, a little bit of a mix of both. And there are certain things that are prohibited, certain types of work that are prohibited. Um, but most things are permitted, but it depends on uh, what what exactly it is. <laughs> Excuse me, you know. So certain things that are unnecessary to do are prohibited. Um... But if it's for the sake of the festival, it's permitted. Ravina Amar Ravina says, that the pagan is always upset to pay back. Um, even after time, he won't be happy. So that's why Rav Yehuda holds it's okay. Meaning, Ravina held that that's the opinion of Rav Yehuda. Um, all right. And that he won't be happy to be free of debt. All right. Masnisen the like Rabbi Yehoshua ben Karcha. 
Our Mishnah does not follow Rabbi Shubin Karcha. What do we mean? The son of Rabbi Shubin Karcha, Emer, Milvashtar, and Efron Mehen, Milval Pen, Efron Mehen, Neshum Kamatzel Miyadam. Rabbi Shubin Karcha said in Brisa that uh, we don't collect a documented loan three days before the festival, but if it's a undocumented verbal loan, that is okay because it's like rescuing the money from them. Um, because he might not pay it back, you know, because because you don't if if he's willing to pay back, even without it being without it being in writing, you you, you should hop around, You should you should get it done as soon as you can because who knows if he's gonna keep his word. But if you have you have it in writing, so then. Uh, you have a contract. That's a different story. Then, then he's going to be happy to be uh, to pay it off. Yosef, Yosef, Achrei, the Rabbi Abba. Yosef was sitting by Rabbi Abba. Yosef, Rabbi Abba, came to Rav Huna. And Rav Abba, Rabbi Abba, was sitting in front of Rav Huna. Yosef called Moshe sort of, Rav. Huna sat down and he said, Hilchsek Rabbi Shubin Karcha, Hilchsek Rabbi Yehuda. Huna said, The halacha here is like Rabbi Shubin Karcha and like Rabbi Yehuda. What does it mean? Hilchsek Rabbi Yeshua, that's like Rabbi Shubin Karcha, the Maran. It's like we said above, if it's a documented loan, that you can't collect three days before the holidays, but an undocumented loan, you should collect whenever you can. Rabbi Yehuda, the Sanya, the Snan. Yehuda, like we have a mission in Baba Kama, nice and similar. It's able to spoil the other. It's very shach or shach. It's very other. Mishnah says if you give wool to be dyed, and the guy dies, you want him to dye it red, and he dyes it black, or you want him to dye it black, and he dyes it red. The mayor and nice and made samurai. Mayor says that the mayor says that the one who made the mistake has to pay the value of the wool. Because whatever was worth before was died. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Meshavach Yosher Al Yitzia Nois and Leis Yitzia. But Rabbi Yehuda says if the improvement exceeds the expenses of the dying, meaning even though it was a mistake, then he has to just pay the expenses and not the full fee. Rabbi Yitzia said the owner has to pay the dyer the expenses, but not the full fee. Rabbi Yitzia said Yosher Shavach Nois and Leis Shavach. But if the expenses of the dying exceed the improvement of the wool. And the only pays him only for the improvement. And Rav Huna says the halach is like Rav Huda. Rav Yosef Lape. So then Rav Yosef turned away, that he wasn't happy with that, and uh, we'll uh, we'll continue this tomorrow. So thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe, and uh, and comment, and let me know if you're if there are anybody who's watching this who's actually interested in the shirim, that I should continue doing it. If uh, I mean I see the last one got a lot of views. Um, so that's very encouraging. So, uh, Mr. Dama, I'm going to keep doing it. All right, thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Always.